Um, I am Ann Diamond. I'm the president of Thunder Bay Arts Council, and I'm glad you're all with us today. Um, I've got the privilege of um, offering uh, the wonderful artists in the gallery an uh, opportunity for you to see their wonderful artwork here. We are live, and I'm looking at it all, and it's beautiful. So um, I'm excited for the program today, and thank you for the opportunity. Um, the Arts Council has always been, uh, we've looked for ways to fulfill our mission, which is to promote, support, and preserve the arts through performance education and leadership. And so we always felt the, the reason to support the arts were not only the performing arts, but the visual arts also. So that's where the gallery came into play. Uh, we needed to move to a better facility and suitable space for displaying art in a more visible way for streets, shoppers, and, and traffic. So here we are on Chisholm Street in a great place in downtown Alpena. Um, the Thunder Bay Arts Gallery is under the Arts Council umbrella, and, but it operates as a separate DBA. Um, the gallery opened in July 1st, 2011. Um, it's open from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Saturday, April through December, and then Wednesday through Saturday in January, February, and March. Um, the artists uh, are always here. There's always an artist um, on staff here uh, to answer any questions and help you out if you have um, any, any questions about the art. It is a cooperative art gallery and um, we're just, it's so exciting to have the artist here to answer questions that you have. Um, we have about 18 to 24 artists, uh, plus a featured artist every uh, every month. We also host artwork from the school system in Alpena Public Schools. In fact, we've got a new uh, selection that's gonna be transferred out. So um, we usually host receptions at the gallery, but due to COVID, uh, we haven't been able to do that. Hopefully we're looking forward to doing that in the near future. Um, so anyway, the gallery participates with the Downtown Development Authority here, and we work cooperatively with all the businesses in downtown Alpena. So without further ado, I'm going to let you get to the art. You've seen enough of me, and I'm going to turn it over to Jay Johnston. He is the president of the artist group at Thunder Bay Arts. Thank you very much. Hi, everyone. My name is Jay Johnston. I'm the president of the Thunder Bay Arts Council uh, Gallery. And on behalf of all the artists, I know that we really appreciate the council in letting us have a place to showcase all of our art and to you know sell our art you know through the gallery. Um, I've been a member since we first started. Uh, July 1st, 2011. So we've been here approximately 10 years. Um, I usually, you know, uh, got into wood burning recently and I have done some pastel work. You can see some pastel work here. Um, I just got into making my own frames for um, some of the wood burning. I think it looks really well. Uh, as you walk through the gallery here today, um, you'll see some pedestals in front of all the artwork and it's an extra way to display some of the smaller pieces, cards, uh, and et cetera, that we have. So um, I'd like to introduce our first artist that is here today, uh, Sam Machulis. Um, he is a uh, pottery person, so I'm gonna have him take it over. Yeah, this is my work, and uh, I've been doing it for close to 50 years. And everything that's here is hand up. The, uh, you can see the handles on these. That is all over the years. Oh. Oh. Tell them really good at this. Uh, Should I start over? <laughs> Yeah, I've been doing this for quite a while, I guess, and not 
Part of that he was high fire still more, so it's really adaptable for you know, using in the kitchen, baking and cooking things. Because it is high fire still more, the handles that, that I've been doing because I've done so long has changed. They're not casted. Uh, so each size of dish or cup or whatever it has to change its size. So it's every piece is very unique in that respect. Um, Certainly, because they are pots that are going to be used in ovens and stuff and cooked it. I have no lead or lithium in my places. So that would be concerning to people about that. Uh, I do uh, maintain my studio lead free, and I think most people will worry about that. And certainly I would too. So things are always evolving, changing, different items, different sizes sometimes. I work with my own blazer so I know exactly what's in there, what materials I use. Which gives me an advantage over somebody who just purchases the blazers and uses them. Hi, this is uh, Dick Bremer. If you have any uh, questions at any point in time uh, as the artists are talking, you can either uh, use the chat, which I see uh, some of you are using. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they were just commenting on your mic being down. Uh, so if you have any questions, uh, the uh, you can just open your mic or put it in chat. Well, the, the thing is, I'm better at answering questions than <laughs> explaining things. That's great. That's great. I have I have a question uh, for the artist. Where do you do the firing of the clay at your house, or where do you fire the a, clay? I have a working studio, and it's been in, been for the last thirty years. I have a master's degree in ceramics. I, Undergraduate degree at Southern Utah State, and I have a master's degree at Central Michigan. So it's just not somebody I picked up, you know. So I have a fair amount of background. I mix my own glazes. Uh, the one thing I don't do is I don't process my own clay. Uh, and the reason for that is the fact that I don't see painters mixing their own pigments. <laughs> and it's a very messy job. So I will mix my own glazes, but I won't mix my own clay. So I found a good clay body that works with my glazers and I've been using them for quite a few years. Okay. Thank you. Any more questions now that I got me talking? <laughs> Any other questions? Thanks, Sam. No, Hey, great job there, Sam. He's very, very talented and he's um, very successful here at our gallery. So our next artist, um, she's not here with us today. It's Pam O'Neill. And this is some of Pam's work right here. Uh, she has some of the larger pieces that we have in the gallery. So in this case, she has four pieces up that she's also been very successful here at the gallery. She really paints with her emotion and if you look at some of these colors, she uses really deep colors and is very good with um, perspective. And uh, also she um, says that she does do commission work. So um, if you like what you see here, you can contact Pam. We do have her business cards of all the artists here at the gallery and you're welcome to come by and pick them up anytime. Uh, she mostly works um, here, um, always with the canvas and uh, uses a lot of acrylics. Okay. Next artist we have today is uh, Shirley Jones, and she is here today. So I'd like to introduce you to the Shirley and have her talk about her pieces. 
Hi, yes, I'm Shirley Jones and I'm a basket weaver. I've been weaving since 2016 when I wanted to start a hobby prior to retiring. So I joined the Thunder Bay Basket Guild and the Association of Michigan Basket Weavers. I learned how to weave through the mentorship of the very talented members of the Thunder Bay Basket Guild and also um, through taking classes, either through the Guild or through the Association of Michigan Basket Weavers or AMB. The AMB offers a convention annually, it's five days. They bring in uh, many teachers and have various classes to choose from, anywhere from four hours, six hours, eight, or even up to 12 hour classes. Also, I've attended a retreat out in Idaho with an instructor there, and am looking forward to going back next month out to Idaho for the same retreat again. Um, since the pandemic and not being able to meet live, uh, there's a, a teacher in Wisconsin that has been doing Zoom sessions, um, and I've uh, taken advantage of that and learned many different techniques from her. The main material that I use when weaving is reed. And the reed comes in many different um, shapes and sizes. So there is a uh, round reed. So there's round reed. There is flat reed, which is that. There is flat oval and it's um, flat on one side and oval on the other. And then there's one that is oval oval. So some of the reed is um, natural, left natural. Some of it is dyed in colors and some is actually smoked reed, which is this brown color. So um, basket weavers use what we call a reed gauge. This is a reed gauge and on the bottom shows the different sizes in how to measure the round reed. And then the top is for the flat reed. So you know what size you're using. It's always um, when using reed needs to be dampened um, or kept wet so that you can shape it. There's different techniques to weaving. And the most common is the under over, which most people are familiar with, under one, over one. But there's also many different techniques and ways to weave. This base here is a twill weave on this basket. Um, there's many different ways to do twill weaving. Um, and that's just one example. Also is um, twining. On here is some twining. Um, there's a triple twine and, and many various different types of twining also. This is a three strand braid and it's done in, um, I wove this with a suede cord. This is a wave weave, which is done, uh, this little basket is done with cane. This technique that I uh, learned recently over the Zoom session is called a four strand braid. So there is a continuous weave and this is done in cane. This is a um, continuous weave also, but it's done in seagrass. This basket actually is a um, double walled basket. So the inside looks different than the outside and it's a very sturdy basket. Um, on here, we have Cherokee wheels. So as you can tell, see that there are many different ways um, in techniques to weaving. The bases on baskets, um, some of them that I have are wooden bases. So for instance, this pie plate has a wooden base. It's a 10 inch round and it bases have a groove or, or a slot around the outside so that you can insert your reed in the slot and then work up um, to shape your basket. But you do, once again, the reed has to be wet to make sure that it is flexible. Some baskets um, are woven on the bottom and some are woven with a filler so that it makes it a solid base. The handles that I have on my display are wooden handles. They come in many different styles and sizes. 
Um, and then um, also handles that I have are leather handles. So for instance, this tote has leather handles on it. The pie basket has leather, leather handles on it. When I finish a basket, I use basket weaver stain and spray it to preserve the reed. Um, it's kind of like min wax. In fact, sometimes I do use min wax. Uh, baskets are either utilitarian and have many different uses, or they're a piece of art. And I thank you very much today for your time and your interest. You and I'd like to welcome everyone to come and visit the Thunder Bay Art Gallery. Thank you. Great. Uh, this is Richard Bremer. Any questions? Certainly covered a lot of territory there. Out of curiosity, the handles on the baskets, are they, what type of wood are they? Um, you know, honestly, I don't know. They okay. could be oak or I, I honestly, I'm not sure. Okay. I just yeah, purchased I them and <laughs> I don't know the they, type they of wood. pretty well. I must there's, some that I, there's some that I buy that is finished, this one. Um, others are not finished. Um, and then some that I wrap, wrap handles. Are, are the uh, uh, the colors you put in the weave, or is that from dyeing the reed before you do the uh, construction? Yes, um, I personally do not dye my reed. I buy it dyed. So you can either use the reed natural or dyed um, or smoked reed. So some of it, um, the smoked reed is actually this brown type reed, but then there's the colored, the dyed reed. Shirley? Yes. This is Jean, and I just want to tell you, I am so happy to see your demo because when we get back in May, I am going to come in and buy something. Can you tell me what the tall cylindrical narrow? Those, I'm sorry, the what? Tall in the back. It looks like a red. Second top. shelf down. Second shelf with a red top. What is the purpose of that? The narrow cylindrical. This okay. Yes. This one? This is actually a vase. It has a, um, a jar inside of it. So you can put flowers and water inside or, um, but you know, people have many different uses for, for um, baskets. So you could decide you want to put paintbrushes in here or flowers or, you know, what, whatever, <laughs> you know, but that's mainly what I call it a vase. I call it the tuxedo vase. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We had a question about uh, uh, congratulating you and uh, asking if you teach classes. And then do you do commissioned work? Um, I would do commissioned work. I have done a little bit of that and I'm okay with doing that. And I do not teach classes. Thank you. Any other questions for Shirley? Great. Well, thank you, Shirley. Very thank well you. Done. And we'll move on. Well, great job, Shirley. I think we got the wrong person hosting this. You did a really good job. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so, all right. Our next artist, um, she's not here with us today, is Stephanie Lafram Boyce. And um, as you can see on uh, her wall, that uh, she has a lot of different art. Um, mediums she works with. Um, we have some pastel here. We have some charcoal here. We have some uh, dry point ink, which is a little different. Um, Stephanie's been with us for three years. I believe she lives in Hillman, which um, one thing about our gallery, all of the artists that are in our gallery are from around this area. So um, I know when I'm working and meet uh, the people that come in, they're uh, one, they're very impressed with our gallery set up and how clean, neat and organized and um, the way things are set up, but also of the talent that we have in our area. And uh, also Stephanie has some handmade memo books here that's on this shelf. And um, she has watercolor on the covers, which is pretty unique. And she also makes her um, own cards that you can purchase. Okay, so you want to go to this one right here. 
This is another artist that um, is not here today. This is Kay Klein's case. Kay works a lot with different materials, silk, wool. Um, she makes baskets and also she has felt soap, which is pretty unique, um, very talented and uh, has her hand in a lot of stuff. And um, I appreciate you coming in and see it's, I don't know if the, the video does it justice. It's nice to feel, um, you know, the silk and the wool. Okay. So this artist is here with us today. This is a jeweler and I'll have her explain um, her jewelry. Um, it's Paula Christensen. Hi. Um, I wish my mother were here to see all this jewelry. She loved jewelry. Anyway, I've been doing jewelry for about 10 years. My I'm favorite sorry, you know, gemstone and Swarovski crystal and freshwater pearls. And so this is uh, Swarovski crystal. And then my, my earrings are like, this is, um, these are coin pearls, freshwater pearls. This is abalone shell with calcite. I know all my stones. Uh, this is uh, blue and orange sodalite. Down here we have an abalone with um, green freshwater pearls. And my focus right now is working with freshwater pearls. On the other side, I have a lot of um, uh, bracelets that I have done this year. And this is also a Swarovski pendant. Swarovski is the, is the queen of uh, crystal. And um, my favorite stones to work with are um, red coral, uh, turquoise, mother of pearl, and I will size my, my bracelets and my necklaces if you purchase from me and I'm not here, then I will size them. If you get a hold of me, get my card. Um, and I think that's it. Questions? Any questions? Very nice. Out of curiosity, there's a person in town who does uh, uh, collects or is a, a rock person. I, I forgot his name. <laughs> We've had him on an all program. He collects all sorts of uh, local materials. Um, uh, do, do you collect your material? Or do I you order my material from uh, a place in Georgia, Florida, and then I go to a place in Texas where I can get my gemstones. Um, this is um, one of my new stones it's called um sardonyx and believe it or not it's orange sardonyx but it, it pink sardonyx but it looks like it's orange and then when you pair it with copper this is the result that i get oh nice nice oh, i will also do custom like um i would welcome people to come to the house and uh, i have a large collection of gemstones and crystal and i will give lessons in my home you can pick out your own stones and um, I'll set you up and you just pay me for the, for the materials. A uh, question came up about where do you get your turquoise? The turquoise I buy in Houston, Texas at a place okay. called Oriental Crest. Um, most of the time I work with um, magnesite, which is a stone that being, can be colored, but I use like, uh, turquoise magnesite, and uh, the necklace that I have on is made with um, turquoise magnesite and red coral. Uh, turquoise is very expensive. I do have a few turquoise items on my line, um, but I find that um, it's just much more cost effective to use the um, magnesite. And that stone can be dyed, dyed any color. I want to showcase one more. This is an abalone shell with calcite and it's on brass findings. And this is one of my Texas stones. Haven't been able to be back there for a while. So my stock is getting low. 
So you personally go. I personally go to a huge gem store. Okay. Uh, it's on the ninth floor of a Wells Fargo building. It is immense. And uh, so then, I, so I can keep my my jewelry at a very reasonable price. Plus, you get out of town. Pardon me. Plus, you get out of town. Oh, I always want to go to Texas. I'm from there. Any other questions? Okay, we have one here. Uh, do you set other people's gems? No. <laughs> I will use your, uh, if your stones are already drilled, I can incorporate those into a design for you. Okay. Any other questions? Great, thank you. Thank you. Very well done. All right, good job, Paula. So um, our next artist um, is not with us today. Um, it's Barb Weisenberg. And just like Pam, um, some of her stuff is a little larger. So we have four pieces here. Um, she paints in acrylic uh, on canvas and uses very bold colors like this one here, which um, shows the, the really darks, but then has the um, really light from the reflection of the moon on the rocks and the trees. Um, she is uh, also has some of these some of these cards that she has, which a lot of the artists have their own special cards and also sells prints. So she's, uh, I believe from Prescott Isle, if I'm not mistaken, um, but we're really grateful that she's with us. All right, I just kind of wanted to go into this little corner here um, these are, uh, photography from Tom Bennett who passed away and we were donated, um, a lot of his pieces of art, which we are allowed to use for the, uh, proceeds go to the gallery to help us with expenses, um, which is very appreciative. So I'd like to, you know, thank their family for that. Okay. Let's see if we can get down here. Can you slide through here? We got a, the next artist has a display of woodworking. Uh, it's Tom Harmon. Tom is not with us today. But I can tell you a little bit about Tom. He served in Vietnam and was honorably discharged as a sergeant. And I'd like to thank him for his service, for sure. Um, he graduated in northern Michigan, up in the UP, and also got his MA from uh, University of Wisconsin. And he is also a, a teacher and really loved to work with kids. And you can see he's a lot of creative different pieces, anything from candle holders, lamps, clocks. Um, and it's really unique as his wife, Anita, um, is an artist here at the gallery too. And they do these cheese boards and she wood burns on them, yes, which is pretty, pretty creative. And um, Tom gets his wood um, now that he's retired, he spends time on his property looking for unique pieces. And he has a friend in the UP that they look for um, special pieces um, to make some of his woodwork.
Yeah. All right, our next artist is not with us today. His name is Randy Zeman. He's a photographer. He's one of our, our newest artists. And knowing Randy so far, he does a lot of uh, photography around the area. So I know these, um, the owls that he has up here in the swans um, are from the area. He tells me stories of how he keeps his camera in the car and, and he looks for, for pictures like this that he sees. And he also has you know, like the Alpina lighthouses, um, freighters, um, just everything from the, around the, the area. And he also come up with really bright frames to go along with his artwork, which looks very nice. Yeah. Throughout the gallery too, you'll see these card racks. Like I said before, most of the artists have their own cards um, that they have. And um, it's of their artwork, which is unique. Um, so their, the card business in our gallery is very good. All right, our next artist is Anita Harmon, who I told you that is the wife of Tom Harmon, the woodworker here. Um, Anita, which I didn't know, was actually born in Germany and she said she's very proud of being a naturalized citizen. Um, she is, uh, works in a lot of different mediums. Um, and I can tell you, um, with me being a self-taught artist, um, I learned a lot over the last 10 years from the artists in the gallery. And I think Anita has been one of the biggest help to me. She's like a teacher um, for me, but she also taught in Wisconsin and Alpena for 25 years. And just like Tom, just loved working, working with the kids. So she works in uh, acrylics, watercolor, oils, um, even does scratch art. Um, and very, very good artist. And I also know that she has actually been an illustrator of some children's books also. Yes. And if you look here, we have these um, bins here are actually uh, prints from the artist that um, are unframed that uh, almost all the artists have some a little more inexpensive because they're print. Um, most of them are matted, so all you need is a frame for them. And we have these throughout the gallery also. All right, we have uh, two woodworking artists in the gallery. And this one is Ken Amlott, and he is here today. So I'd like to introduce him and talk about his work. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hi, <clears throat> my name is Ken Amlott, and uh, I'm, uh, I've been an artist here for almost two years, and uh, I do woodworking. I've, uh, I got into wood turning in high school, and I've been kind of hooked on it ever since. I've always had a lathe, and <clears throat> since I retired, um, I've been able to devote more time to my woodworking stuff, and I really enjoy it. Um, I like to push the limits of myself. Um, I'm on, on uh, watching videos constantly of wood turners around the world that <clears throat> turn wood, and um, I pushed myself a little bit farther last spring. I decided to make um, a violin, and I really had a good time researching and studying on it, and um, I enjoyed every minute of that as well as making the violins. So um, anyway, I use uh, primarily northern Michigan woods, occasionally some exotic stuff, but mostly northern Michigan wood, and we're blessed in this area to have so much nice stuff to work with. And um, anyway, that's about it. 
Are there any questions? What's your favorite wood to be uh, working with? I notice there's some, obviously, some walnut and some. Yeah, I, I really love the colors and uh, character within the walnut, although I do like turning beach probably the best. But mm. um, it, it, it's, it's all nice. The, each wood has different characteristics, and you learn to work with that. And um, it's, it's just a passion of mine. Any questions? We had quite a selection of different woods and so forth. They're interesting. Yeah. Thank you. We can show some close ups. Yeah. I saw the violin one time. All right. Thanks, Ken. Um, I can tell you that. Uh, Ken, I talked to him when he's he's one of our. I don't know how long you've been here, Ken. Uh, almost two years. Almost two years when he came in, and he said that he was very excited about starting to sell quite a bit of his his stuff. And I really know why you'd be surprised. It's beautiful wood stuff. And uh, I remember coming in on a conversation with with him and Tom, and they were talking about all this wood. I was just proud to be able to make frames for my artwork and, and it's like you look at this stuff and it's like oh man I don't know what they were talking about but it was interesting okay yes. uh, I think the question uh, for Ken uh, can he highlight some uh, specific pieces and what type of woods they were mm -hmm. These uh, trinket boxes are, this happens to be walnut, and uh, usually I, I try to turn the, the lid from the same piece as uh, the face, but I believe in this one it was two separate pieces, but it's, this was walnut. This happens to be cherry. That was a tree that was grown in my backyard. Can hold it. I like the gnarled ones. On the cutting boards, I use um, maple, cherry, uh, walnut, um, and sometimes some elm. But uh, basically, that's what I put into the, and everything that I have here is food safe. Um, it's treated with a product that's safe for uh, food. Is there anything else? Any other questions? Thank you, Ken. All right, Richard, if it's okay, we're going to just do a little skipping because we have our next artist has an uh, appointment to go to. So our next artist is a potter, and she is with us today, and this is Leah Stafford. All right. She's good. <laughs> Okay, hello everybody. I'm Leah and I have been in the gallery for two years now. And I have been lucky enough to um, learn from one of the best potters in the area that you met in the very beginning, Sam Michellis. Uh, for about 10 years, I was in his studio um, learning all of his secrets. <laughs> and now I have my own studio and this is my work. Um, I have a passion for art that works. So I like functional, um, beautiful pottery. And one of my unique things is that I make sinks. And I just had one um, customer order one in December for Christmas. And I, uh, when you make a custom order, you always make extra in case something doesn't work out. So here is the other one. <sighs> show you this sink that I have here. 
Um, I have one in my home as well, and it's just a joy to uh, wash your hands over top of the sink. <laughs> Uh, also, a kind of a new, newer item. Um, I've done these uh, wine glasses that have been a pretty good hit. Um, I throw the bottom piece and then I adhere it with a strong glue to the glass. Cool. Um, and I will also welcome um, custom work. And I'll try to do uh, whatever your needs are. And I have several uh, placeware sets right now. Uh, people have ordered, and so I'm working on them. But it, it's a slow process, so it takes time, like six months. <laughs> and you have to go from the clay, form it, let it dry slowly so it doesn't crack, and then it has to be fired one time in the bisque, which is over 1,000 degrees. Then you glaze it, then it has to be fired again, and then that's over 2,000 degrees the second time. And then it's very vitrified, and it you know, is food safe. So I learned from Sam, so I have the same... Uh, glazes that I make, or actually his wife, Barb, makes them for us. And they're safe, they're dishwasher safe, microwave safe, you can even put them in the oven. So they're very, they're very hearty as long as you don't drop it. <laughs> All right, I think that's everything. Are there any questions? Anyone have a question? Most you have quite a collection of cabinet knobs down there. Oh, too. that's true too. I all of my kitchen uh, cabinets and my mother's kitchen cabinets and somebody else in Arizona's kitchen cabinets all have yeah. these um, pulls on there. And you just I have the hardware already glued in, and you just put it right on your bathroom as well. You know, it goes along with the sink, it matches. Um, so this mm -hmm. is a fun. Yeah. Oh, not not new thing. Cabinet knobs. Yeah. Questions. Any questions? Uh, there was a question about: Do you have a favorite glaze or favorite glaze, favorite colors? I do, actually. I, you know, and then everything becomes that one color, and you have to be careful not to have everything be one color. So this this is kind of a newer glaze for me. I've um, I actually have two different types of clays here. I have the K5 stone body, um, which is the one that Sam also uses, and that's the brown. But then I've incorporated a porcelain slip that I put over the top, which makes it a whiter, brighter base. And then the, um, the glaze kind of pops out a little bit more. So I've had this glaze for a long time, but it didn't look as good on the other clay body. So I like these two toned. It's a matte turquoise along with the shiny turquoise on top. That's probably my favorite. Uh, and then somebody ordered white and I'm realizing I really kind of like the white as well. It's really a bright, uh, bright mm -hmm. set. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the green is my favorite right now. Other questions? Doesn't say her name. Say any name, name. Shoot, they should do that. Thank you, very interesting, very well done. Appreciate it. All right, thank you. Yeah, right, we might have to do do a little backtracking, but we have an artist here, another jeweler that is here today. Um, very beautiful jewelry. And this is the work of Jan Herring. Close. Hello, you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay. As Jay said, I'm Jan Herring. I've uh, been a member of the gallery since day one, since we opened, and I believe this will be our 10th anniversary coming up this uh, yep. this first of July. Is that right, Jay? Yep, first of July. Be our 10th of uh, 10th anniversary. I've made jewelry for quite a number of years, and it's interesting because growing up, my father made jewelry. He worked for the Coast Guard. He was a custom cabinet builder, but he loved to pick up rocks on the beaches in Canada. We lived in Sault Ste. Marie, and we would often go over to Sioux, Canada and go up on the beaches. And he had rocks tumbling in our basement and made rings and necklaces and things for all of us. And so 
after he died, somehow I just became interested in making jewelry and I've not made the type he did, but I've made different things. I started out with some basic beading, um, which is kind of a piece a little bit like, like this. And, you know, just beads that are kind of put together. And then I started taking different classes. Uh, a few years ago, we went down to the Tucson Gem and Jewelry Show down in Tucson, Arizona. And it is uh, reputed to be the largest gem and jewelry show in the world. Mm -hmm. And I took several different classes there in, um, with some silver work and different things like that. And I've tried to expand some of the things that I've done. Um, this piece here. The silver piece that's on this necklace was made out of metal clay, silver metal clay, and it's pure silver, but it starts out in a clay form. And you can roll it and stamp it and do different things, and then you fire it just like you would um, different things. And this particular focal on here is reversible. You can turn the necklace one way or the other. It has two different designs on it. The beads on this are pure turquoise, and so this is a kind of a special piece that I really like. I also have gotten into doing some wire work with my jewelry. This necklace, this necklace here, it has a, a purchased stone on it that is jasper, but all the rest is made from copper wire. The chain is completely made by hand and all the trim that is on the stone is also made by hand. I work with both sterling and copper. This of course is copper. And when I finish my copper, I oxidize it and then polish it back so that it has a darker tone rather than the, the shiny copper. I just happen to prefer that. Okay, uh, one other thing I'd like to share with you, I also have uh, pins that I've made by hand. Um, this is one of the pins. The beads I happen to purchase, they're handmade and I purchased those down in Tucson at the Gem and Jewelry Show a few years ago, purchased several of them. But the bead, it, or the necklace pin rather itself is all made by hand. This happens to be sterling silver and it has the bead. I've done some with copper as well. And speaking of the silver, I started out making um, my, my work that I used the silver with, I used sterling silver. Then I was taught by some classes, classes that I took to go up to argentium sterling or fine silver. So I no longer use the sterling silver, although I still have some pieces used with it. The reason is, is that the sterling silver has a higher percentage of copper in it and it oxidizes and darkens and tarnishes more quickly. It can be polished back, of course. The argentium, it takes a long time to tarnish and oftentimes doesn't tarnish at all. And the fine silver doesn't either. They're of course more expensive but I really prefer working with those. And as far as cost of my jewelry, I do have a variety. We have people who um, don't want to spend a lot. I try to have uh, necklaces and earrings that are less expensive. And then of course, some of my finer pieces are more expensive. And one more quick thing that I'll show you before um, we close. One thing I really like to make are rings. And those are all handmade. They're, they're turned on um, a ring mandrel and turn it this way. Okay. And I make different designs with them. And um, some of them are adjustable and others are, are not, but I have the sizes on them. So I think that's all I have. Uh, if anybody has any questions. Any questions? The one on the uh, chat was obviously answered. Do you make rings? <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Great. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. All right. We're going to do a little backtracking. All right. We got a couple more artists. go through just wanted to show you this uh, this section here and what we do this section here um, as Ann said in the beginning that 
we have room for like 24 artists or so. Um, and we do have two new artists coming in. Um, this section here is open and we just have artists just put on work so it's not a blank space for now until we get new artists in. And how you do that, if there's any um, talented people out there that have items that uh, they would like to showcase um, in our gallery, we have um, a process that you go through. Uh, you fill out an application, uh, set up a time for um, uh, having a jury. Uh, we have, I think, a group of four that will look at the pieces that you bring in. Um, and again, I think we have a, a couple spots right now open. So you can stop by the gallery and pick up one here. We used to have receptions for them pre COVID. Um, we're hoping to get that back. Um, currently, we have Paul, and I'm not going to attempt to say his last name, but he has very colorful paintings, uh, large paintings um, in the gallery right now. Uh, he doesn't sell the originals, but we have the prints that we have in back of the gallery that are that he is willing to sell. So I think that concludes our tour today. Um, we're at 127 West Chisholm Street in Alpena. So hopefully you get to see a little bit of what we have here, but we really appreciate it if you could come down and see what we have in person. We change a lot of things out uh, constantly. Uh, we change a whole gallery around probably four times a year where everybody brings in you know, whatever season that we're in, some new artwork. So there's always something new to look at. So anybody has any questions for me? Any questions? All set then. All right. Thank you, Jay, for the, spending the time along with your artists here to give us a tour. I'm sorry we had some technical difficulties, but we'll have to iron those out. So one last opportunity for questions then we'll uh, end the uh, program. Thank you for attending.